I can't remember um, how long it's been since I was able to breathe like I breathe now. Having someone tell me take a deep breath and be able to do that um, is something that I'll never again take for granted because I haven't been able to take a deep breath. It was like sticking a rock, you know, in my mouth and trying to get oxygen through that. So um, that's just been phenomenal. The lung transplant program, while it is new and it is restarting, it really joins a very well-established transplant service line. Um, we have uh, well-established and experienced kidney, liver, heart, um, uh, LVAD, pancreas, all of those programs really are have long-standing histories and so the, there's really a great infrastructure for the lung transplant to support that program and it really makes I think a, a great combination. Uh, and so I was recruited in March of 2010 from the University of Minnesota. Um, uh, one of the key things to a successful academic uh, program is to have clinicians who are experts in their field. And Dr. Denglinger equally uh, was recruited from Washington University in St. Louis uh, where they have a long history of lung transplant and thoracic surgery uh, expertise. And so I feel that with um, these two excellent surgeons and adding the third of Dr. Economides, um, we clearly have a program that will allow us uh, to excel into the future. I really felt embraced by the medical community here. Um, like I said, I did my homework. I studied up on the people that had been brought in and what they were doing and felt very comfortable with my options here. I also think that Ms. Evans is an ideal patient because we, we look for uh, folks who have a strong social support system and she clearly has that. Uh, we look for people who uh, can understand a complex medical regimen and are willing to um, go through all of the steps that are necessary to have a good outcome. So Ms. Evans uh, uh, clearly embodies all of those things and I think uh, because of her uh, commitment uh, to, to us and us to her, um, I think that she has done very, very well. There were two or three chronic issues going on, asthma, COPD, um, some fibrosis that was a result of chronic pneumonias, and then I had a hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is sort of an autoimmune reaction to um, where my, my body's defense system had um, decided that it was going to reject my lungs. So my lungs were going to, my lungs were being destroyed. So the uh, operation begins with an uh, incision up and down on the chest, dividing the breastbone and providing exposure. Uh, for this operation, we, the heart, um, we do require that they go on heart-lung bypass. So it's the same type of bypass used for virtually all types of cardiac surgery, and it's something that's done very routinely every day here at MUSC. We then remove both the right and the left lungs while the patient is supported with the cardiopulmonary bypass uh, circuit and then we uh, re-implant the airways and the arteries and the veins uh, connecting the heart to the lungs. Any patient who has um, an expected survival of about two to three years time, so their lung disease is so severe uh, that despite all the best medical therapy that we can provide today, um, we believe that they are very high risk to either end up in an intensive care unit and quite severely ill or actually to die from their lung disease over the next two to three years. That's an appropriate patient for us to consider uh, performing a lung transplant evaluation on. Uh, the other uh, group of patients, and, and these two things are closely tied together, but as patients who have uh, severe limitations in their quality of life. Um, uh, so there are some patients that have such severe limitations in their quality of life, uh, but their prognosis, we think that they could live longer than two to three years. Uh, we may consider those patients in the hopes that we can give them a significantly improved lifestyle and outcome after transplant. Surgeries typically take uh, five to six hours. Uh, sometimes it takes a bit longer depending on the amount of scarring there is in the chest based on the lungs, uh, the patient's pulmonary disease. All. Um, transplant services really can be provided now at the medical university and this with the lung transplant program give us the ability really to meet the full needs of all patients in uh, South Carolina with end-stage organ failure. I really want to encourage people um, to, to be aware that, that they are potentially saving many lives when they agree to uh, be a transplant 
um, or a, a donor, um, and, and that the importance of letting their family know as well.